<laughs> oh, money. Um, so I'm rolling. So just like introdu first introduce yourself and then just kind of slowly verge into what you're doing and starting from starting from the pressing of the bricks to what you've done now. Okay. Uh, my name is Graham Robertson. I've been here for about five months um, working on construction and getting the infrastructure set up. Um, so I've learned a lot about the process. When I first got here, we were using um, we were using netting. Well, I don't know how to go about this. Is that um, first talk about the fact that you're you're using CB? Just talk about CBs as a building material mm. and mm -hmm. how you proof them to be weather resistant. So I just see. look at it as an explanation from the, as to the whole process. So your question is, what are CBs? How do you? If you would you let me to ask questions along the way? I, I like questions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it feels like I'm talking to a person, and I'm like, you are wondering about it, mm -hmm. as opposed to you just addressing like yeah. random questions. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I, I can't really relate to a big. I don't know. Okay. I can relate to you better. Okay. Cool. So, Graham, what is this as a building material, and what do you see as the qualities of it how okay let me start uh, asking too many questions what is this building material you're working with right now uh, CBs are a mixture of sand clay compressed into a brick we use our own brick press um, usually you want to do like 70% sand to 30% clay um, it's a very high compression it's kind of like Adobe which is built wet um, whereas this is just uh, compressed dry with a low moisture content um, so the main advantage of it is that it's got a very high strength under heavy loads um, it's much faster than building with another earthen material like cob or um, adobe or rammed earth it's less labor intensive um, how do we make them? How do we make CEBs? Yeah, just just give a quick description of how they're relevant to OSE and what we do. How are CEBs made? So to make the CEB, we use our CEB press, etc. Okay, so to make the CEB, we use the brick press. Um, it's got a big hopper to feed into so feed soil into. Um, we use a soil pulverizer to pulverize the dirt into a bucket and then load that with the tractor into the hopper. Um, and then What's the mixture you guys add to, the, to make the right bricks? Um, a good mixture is usually about 70% sand to 30% clay. Um, the clay is really the active ingredient that binds it together and keeps it from crumbling. If you have too much gravel, it's going to crumble. Uh, a lot of our bricks that from the last pressing of this building have a lot of uh, gravel and limestone mixed in. The lime does give it an added uh, water-resistant effect, but what I've noticed about these bricks particularly is that they're crumbly. So what you get is a lot of these... Um, well, let's go to a new section of wall that I haven't filled yet. As, within, as with learning anything else, you start experimenting and I guess this was one of the this is one of the things that comes from experimenting is these crumbly bricks because of the gravel that's used in it if you have too much gravel in a brick it's gonna crumble so what I've been doing as opposed to trying to fill the wall the all the cracks and holes in the wall with stucco which is a cement uh, it's like a 10% cement and lime mixture um, I'm going in and filling it in with sand clay first because you can build a lot thicker layers with sand clay um, and then if you to get the strongest finish with a cement lime mix uh, which is sand clay with a little bit of cement and lime mixed in you want it to be the thinnest coat possible because lime hydrated lime in order for it to cure it has to be exposed to air and water moisture in the air um, and if it's too thick of a layer, it's going to crack, it's not going to cure properly, and it's probably not going to be very weather resistant, which is the objective 
of why we're plastering these bricks in the first place. Um, okay, so you just you, you were just talking about stucco, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's try and take this case step by step, like just so we're not, yeah. not we're not jumbling it up and people Should, can like. <laughs> Should I start with what stucco is, or like how, why we? I'm kind of starting with bricks, so I'm just okay, thinking okay. like, so we press the bricks right mm -hmm. now. That's we, we've gotten as far as uh, you make the bricks by adding. <laughs> I'm just like going like Dude, my no, my uh, train of thought. It's but. my job to, to figure out how it's gonna come together, so don't right. worry about it. That's, that's okay. What I think about. Cool. Um, so so we we have a compressed brick, right? It's mm -hmm. it's just to remind us. It's what what how's it? What's it composed of exactly? Uh, compressed brick can be um, really any mix, any appropriate mixture of dirt. That the objective is that it will hold together with light weather, with um, light weather exposure. Um, usually, what that means is about seventy percent sandy soil to thirty percent clay. Um, it's okay to have a little gravel in there, but as you can see with our bricks, the gravel, some of our bricks have a little bit too much gravel, um, which causes crumbling. Um, but if you get a really nice mixture, you'll have bricks that look really nice. Can you show us stronger. a more Dale brick than that one? Um, okay, so for instance, these are all crumbly, crumbly, gravelly bricks. These have a little too much clay. You can see there's a lot of cracking there. That's because clay shrinks when it dries and cures. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't have a huge selection here because this was all done in one batch, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, this was done on site. The reason they use this gravel is because it has um, reject limestone mixed in, so it gives it an added benefit of water mm. resistance. Um, Okay, so mo moving on to, so you've got your, you pressed your pile of bricks, which ideally would consist of what you mentioned before. When you're, you, you, what's the preferred method of building with it? Like, do you want to store them for a amount of time to dry? Or do you want to just go straight, like, from the production line into the wall? What's the ideal, ideal method? Mm, I'm not really experienced with the brick pressing. Okay. Um, I just kind of wanted to do, like, a little... Like tutorial because all I really have expertise it's with is like okay. filling these cracks, making it seal nicely. Um, but I can say, you, I, can, I know that it's it's good to let them cure, um, which means stacking them up and covering them with plastic, so that the lime or whatever, like if you have added lime, um, helps the lime cure and become more water resistant I don't in terms of construction you don't really want to talk about these things because you haven't necessarily been yeah I haven't I haven't okay. ever built a brick house before okay <laughs> so let's start from once you have a wall assembled or once you have a structure assembled the process moving forward from that point because that seems like what you've got experience in yeah mm -hmm. so just to explain that situation say just say once you have a structure like this which is our workshop, which I'm now insulating. This is the process by which you do that. Okay. So once you have a structure that is built, the walls are built, roofs on and everything, it's time to start plastering and sealing up the cracks, especially because winter is very shortly upon us. Um, so what I've been doing is, uh, when I first got here, we were using netting as a to give the stucco tensile strength which is like um, strength that you get from fiber usually but we don't put fiber in our plaster um, the objective here is to protect the wall from side some from a sideways rain and hmm, I guess I'm trying to think of where to go from here um, I was talking about netting. <laughs> you were talking about netting, but you, you were saying we usually use netting and then you went yeah. off, so, so mm -hmm. maybe start saying we don't use netting, ne I'm not using netting this time because... Well, okay, yeah, so now I'm experimenting with not using netting. Um, 
The reason that we were using netting before is because we were doing one pass of stucco and trying to fill all of these cracks and holes and places where bricks didn't meet up and stuff. And so now what I'm trying to do is fill that with um, sand clay first so that we have a flush wall to plaster with stucco. Um, the main reason we're doing that is because the thinner coat you have of a cement lime stucco, the stronger it'll be when you get those really hard weather, like um, sideways rains. Um, if you come look at my, I started using this gravel from our foundation trench. There's a lot of gravel laying around. You can use rocks. The main point here is to fill these huge cracks. You can use pieces of CEBs, um, but just to demonstrate for like the cracks that are too small to fill with CEBs but too big to fill with just sand clay, um, just stuff some sand clay mixed with gravel in there. And that will dry really hard and it actually becomes structural if the bricks, other bricks were to fail it would hold up the bricks in that spot um, the reason I'm adding gravel into the mix is because if you have a really large gap and you're just filling it with sand clay it's gonna crack a lot it's probably not gonna be as good of a finish and the cracks will actually telescope through the stucco once you put the last layer on. Um, so, I was talking about, okay, so now once we have a whole wall covered with this, um, once it's all flush and we get most of the cracks covered, I'd say any crack that's bigger than a quarter inch should be filled with sand clay or gravel or brick. Um, so once you have it all flush and flat, um, then you can do your sand clay mixture with uh, cement and lime additive. Um, What's the consistency of the two? Um, this pots? you want to do a little, th a little thicker, um, just to give it some body, so it's not falling out as you're trying to stuff it into the cracks. So what's what's this? This. Yeah. This is sand clay. So this is a mixture of 70% sand and 30% clay. Um, the clay is just, the clay gives it a chemical bond. Um, part of our procedure is to always wet this wall down first um, before you apply any kind of earthen plaster. Um, so before applying stucco, you're also going to want to wet the wall down um, because it's got clay in it, so it's it's a chemical bond between the wall and the plaster. Um, the sand, though, gives it a mechanical bond, meaning the particles actually lock together, and that's what gives it the strength. Um, lime and cement is also a chemical bond. Um, there's a reaction that happens with lime uh, as it's exposed to air called carbonization or carbonation. Um, so as your plaster cures and gets exposed to air, the lime hydrate actually turns back into limestone, meaning that it's uh, as waterproof as a limestone rock, or to s some degree of, of waterproofing. And the cement also gives it a somewhat of a waterproofing. You don't want to use too much cement though, or else the... the um, Cement actually wicks water, so it can actually wick water into your wall, and it actually hinders the ability of the plaster to breathe. So you don't want to use too much cement. What we do here is a mixture of 70% uh, sand, or I'd say 60% sand, 20% clay, 5% cement, and 5% lime. So. And just to just to kind of like broaden again, <laughs> you said you said that um, it's used to protect from water damage, but mm -hmm. is are there any other functions that this that the the stuccoing has? Um, so an another reason that I'm filling these cracks is because um, it's about to get really cold here, 
uh, these cracks will let cold air or will let the hot air escape um, and will kind of ruin any attempt that you have at heating a building. So that's one um, function of the plaster or of the filling of the cracks is just to keep hot air from escaping the building. Um, the next function which will come in our next layer is the waterproofing of the stucco. Um, that's going to protect the wall from sideways rain. Um, I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. But it's also it's aesthetics as well, kind of, isn't it? I mean, like for example, the inside of a house is nice to have like a, like a blank wall as opposed to kind mm -hmm. of bricky yeah rodents could climb into or bugs or whatever you know, yeah it's also quite beautiful I mean if you once you have a layer of stucco you can also paint over it with a uh, lime wash or um, different kinds of paints pigments you can make you can even make relief sculptures in the wall um, we haven't really done any of that here because we're pretty focused on just getting the infrastructure safe for the winter um, but once you have that once you have a building established over time you can add things to the wall just by simply wetting it down and adding um, you can even make mud trim <laughs> I mean you could make mud trim and paint over it or do designs actually um, we have a couple rooms here that are painted pretty nice so this is this is step one, which is filling the, gra the gaps. So can you describe that the steps again and then maybe go into more detail about the next step after this? Steps so, of... Uh, so right now you're filling cracks, then you're going to come past this again and stuck up with the air sprayer, right? And you can, you can just say, we, we've found that an air sprayer speeds up the process. This isn't essential, but it's something we've developed and we do recommend. Um, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And then just talk about the process of doing that. Mm -hmm. But we'll maybe go into that a bit more tomorrow, actually, so just talk generally about it for now. Okay. Um, so the first step in uh, sealing up a wall would be you want to mix up a sand clay and wet the wall down and then fill in all these cracks uh, using gravel mixed with sand clay to fill in the really deep gaps like this where bricks don't meet up. Um, or where there's just chips taken out of the bricks. Um, so then once you've got your wall flush and flat, uh, you're going to come back with a layer of stucco, which you can trowel on, or we use a plaster sprayer, which is something that's relatively easy to come by. You just need a pretty powerful compressor and um, a plaster sprayer which we got from um, mortarsprayer.com that's one of the m more well-known ones but um so yeah uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm like dropping all these like details that are not relevant. no no those are all relevant dude definitely for sure um, are there, is there any like are there any little tidbits you've picked up while you with your hours of doing this um, like in terms of the physical pushing in of the clay which you think would help people to know yeah there's a lot of stuff um, so maybe let's get a bit more intimate into the right. this is yeah um, let's see here I'm trying to think of where to start so start with little cracks and then maybe we'll move on to big ones like up there alright so little cracks anything from a quarter inch to I'd say an inch wide you can just use a pretty wet mixture of sand and clay um, so just go in it's best to wet your wall first but for the sake of demonstration I'm just gonna go in and show um, just start from the bottom of the crack and smooth upwards and just kinda go all different ways. Just kind of cup your hand and push it into the crack. Um, also, stuff like this where the brick meets the wood 
It uh, could be a source of hot air escaping. So just take your finger and just kind of push it into the crack. And then you get a really nice seal so you don't have to worry about sealing that with the stucco later. That, that's really what we're trying to do here is just lighten our workload for later and it makes the stucco a lot stronger if you don't have to fill in all these deep holes. Because as I was saying earlier, is the, the stucco is a lot stronger the thinner the layer is. So think of, think of the objective like you're trying to get like an eggshell coating on the wall because that way the lime in the, in the stucco um, carbonizes more thoroughly. The more it's exposed to air and, and moisture in the air, the stronger the chemical reaction will be. Whereas if you're pushing stucco into all these cracks, it's not going to be exposed to the air and the moisture in the air. So it's going to be a lot weaker, it's probably going to crack more. Where, um, whereas having this nice flush wall gives you the ability to just do one thin pass, trowel it, and then it'll be a lot stronger than if you were pushing it in here and having all these cracks filled with lime stucco. So then for the bigger cracks, stuff like this, I would usually use pieces of rock or broken concrete or bricks. I don't have any of those on hand right now. Um, but stuff like this, it's just too, a little bit too big for filling with sand clay. Just push it in, get some like small gravel like this, mix it up with some sand clay, and then just push it in. Sometimes it's, the rocks are too big to fit in there, but basic point of this is the rocks add a lot of strength. They prevent cracking. Um, and you don't have to mix as much stucco, so you're not wasting a bunch of a bunch of um, sand clay by filling these huge gaps with it. What do you What do you like about this uh, these materials for building with? What, was the, what do you like about this method of building and this method of stuccoing? Um. What well, are the advantages? The advantage of using sand clay is it's abundant and pretty much everywhere in the world. Um, if you can't get sand, you can usually use somewhat sandy soil. If you can't get pure sand, ideally it's good to have sharp, coarse grain sand. But um, you can have clay, you have clay pretty much everywhere in the world, so it makes sense that, I mean, at all costs, I would go for, I would go for earthen building over any other form because it's also much stronger than, say, a concrete wall, which um, can wick water up. It causes mold. the The walls can't breathe as well as this, whereas clay and earthen walls have the ability to transpire moisture. So on the inside of the building, you can actually regulate the humidity. Um, Trying to think of what else. <laughs> Environmentally, is more friendly. Is that an element of it? Mm. Yeah, it's a uh, less embodied energy in the production of the materials. I mean, all it takes is just mining the sand and clay, and um, I mean, it's just dirt basically, which is pretty abundant. That's, that's the basic aim of this, is using abundant locally sourced materials so you're not having to import a bunch of concrete and things that take a huge amount of energy to produce that, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'd rather use things that are abundant than something that is scarce. I mean, it's not 
Concrete is definitely not scarce, but it takes a huge amount of energy to produce. But it is very strong. <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't know. Concrete's like, it, it has its uses, but as far as walls go, you can build a perfectly structural wall with dirt, with earth, whether it's compressed or mixed wet and built wet. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as I know, I mean, I've had experience building with um, wood, cob, uh, pallets. This is definitely the least labor intensive um, and using our brick press, it seems pretty uh, easy to do, as as opposed to mixing like Adobe and making Adobe bricks. That would be the alternative or the closest comparison to CBs, which you have to mix uh, earth wet like this, and then put it into molds and let it dry and cure in the sun this you can press it and build it on site immediately um, which is much I mean that's a pretty efficient I don't know it's a lot faster than if it was you had to let it bake in the sun but yeah I, I don't know I'm trying to think of why I was even interested in this in the first place <laughs> <laughs> it's an ancient form of building and it's kind of been brought, brought into the 21st century via the technology used to press the bricks. Yeah. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to put that into my own words. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily choose CEBs myself, but if I was building a house, but I think it's definitely the prob probably the most um, efficient way of building in terms of labor and cost. But yeah, I really just wanted to show this method because we've been doing it a completely different way up until now. Um, with the netting and everything and filling the cracks with the stucco and it seems a lot more efficient and so once I get I mean I'm I did this whole building in two days filling the cracks and with our new sprayer it should probably only take one day with just me do with just me mixing and spraying I mean, this the whole building filling all these cracks probably took about 40 gallons of plaster, which is about eight five gallon buckets. Can I ask you another question mm -hmm. that's not to do with this necessarily? Um, so you're leaving in a few days now. Um, what would you say that uh, you've learned and that you've kind of gained out of this experience? And can you, can you just tell us about about your experience here? It's a very broad question. Yeah. Um, so what? Maybe maybe this put it this way. <laughs> Can you talk, can you divide this, your answer into three three points, right? So, what you thought it was going to be like coming here. <laughs> That's a horrible question. I can't, I, I don't know, I... Okay. My, my, well, well, go, go ahead, go let ahead. Me, let me think about what I'm going to ask you. No, it's not a horrible... Okay, I am rolling. Okay, so this is uh, instructions on how to mix up cement, lime, uh, earth, and plaster or other known as stucco. Um, so we're mixing with a paddle drill. Um, you can mix with a uh, cement mixer, drum. Uh, this is just what we have, so that's what I'm gonna demonstrate with. Um, so 
the basic consistency you want for a plaster sprayer, we use a, a hopper sprayer, or a, they call them mortar sprayers. Um, so you kind of want a thinner texture, like kind of like that, like thinner than ketchup, a little bit thinner. Um, the ratio is about 60% sand, 20% clay, 5% lime, and 5% cement. Um, those can vary a little bit. So, start out with just enough water to coat the bottom. Um, the next thing that makes things a lot easier is having slip already mixed up, which is one part clay and one part water. Um, what we do, our process for that is um, using a screen and taking dry clay, just any kind of clayish soil, and pushing it through a screen into a, a barrel of water or a wheelbarrow or bucket of water. And then use the paddle mixer to mix it up. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we start with is a little bit of water in a bucket and then some slip. So what I heard um, Floyd using, which was the guy who did the construction on the Hab Lab, um, there's a video on YouTube of him mixing and he says to use two shovels of dry clay so since we are already using hydrated clay it's going to be about half that or double that I mean so that would be like I'd say probably about two gallons of slip for each bucket for each five gallon bucket so then it's good to mix up your lime with your slip, lime and cement and slip together, mix it up homogeneously and then add the sand. So this is like half a coffee cup of lime or whatever that kind of can is. Just 5%, just keep that in mind. You don't really have to be so precise with it. But, and the ratios will vary depending on your soil and it takes some experimenting. So what I'd recommend is mixing up a few different types and noting what your ratios were and then doing a test portion on the on the wall. So and then writing down what each ratio is and figuring out what's the best for your soils. Um, so then we're gonna mix this up. What I usually start off with is about three shovels of sand um, and just get it to where it's like watery ketchup is what I think of. And then add water as you need it. too thick for uh, our plaster sprayer to handle. Um, that might be okay with for troweling, hand troweling, but it makes it a lot easier if it's nice and thin um, just to get it a nice even coat. I'm gonna go get some water. Oh no. 
Now I can't participate in the production run. I didn't see that. consistency for my preference uh, you can kind of tell because the the consistency of it uh, you can tell like how it stacks up on the surface kind of piles but it's not completely thick like that stuff so I may need to add a little water to this stuff see that how that sits up on your hand without flowing off like this that's more what you want for a plaster sprayer. This could, you could get by with that for troweling. If it's too thick with the plaster sprayer for some reason, like this consistency cracks more than if it's thinner like that. I don't know why that is, but it's just what, um, what I found to be happening. That's it. That's it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brad.